if dinosaurs didn't go extinct, do you think humans would still be able to evolve? I mean, my guess is probably not. I don't, I don't think. I don't think it's quite the. Um, what, what was it? Oh, Simon Conway Morris had that book. I said inevitability of man that, like, even if you rewound it, everything would come back. I'm. I'm not. I don't think it's that far. Um, I certainly don't think it's um, anything like, quite like the butterfly effect of, you know, if one mammal had been trodden on by one T-Rex, then humans would never have evolved either. We should say that the uh, ancestor of the primates, or the closest, there's a lot of debate around this, uh, it's a kind of tiny creature, Purgatorius, that was our ancestor. Yeah, so this is us. This is what we evolved from. Yes, uh, Scandentia. I think it's the group. Basically, a rodent. Yeah, I mean, there, there were probably primates around in the Cretaceous. Some of the molecular clock stuff suggests that primates were around alongside the dinosaurs, though we've never found um, any osteological evidence of that. But yeah, the, 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 there's been a backwards and forwards about were dinosaurs already on their way out or were they a bit limited by the very end Cretaceous? I think the more recent analyses have shown that's probably not the case. So in other words, they were basically doing fine um, right up to the extinction event. And so, yeah, if the asteroid hadn't hit, there's no reason to think that they were on some kind of terminal decline. Something else may have hit. There may have been, um, you know, some other environmental disaster or something may have happened, or maybe they're more vulnerable to stuff. Um Th than we know of but there's no i don't think there's any really good reason to think they wouldn't have carried on relatively well i mean even post dinosaur extinction you had a window where the mammals and the birds were pretty competing there was a lot of big birds getting going and various big carnivorous terrestrial kind of hyper predatory ostrich like things like the fossoracids um so there's no guarantee that mammals would have even taken over post the dinosaur extinction um since initially they were in a bit of a uh, a fair bit of competition so this is just going to based on current scientific understanding human evolution would be highly improbable if dinosaurs hadn't gone extinct 66 million years ago because dinosaurs dominated ecological niches for everything basically like I mean, body that's the mammals. Thing. You, you, you look through yeah the mesozoic the late Triassic dinosaurs are there alongside a whole bunch of other big and unusual and interesting reptiles and, and some other early pre-mammal-like things that are closer to mammals than, than the reptiles. But once you've gone into the Jurassic, you've now got a solid like 120, 130 million years where almost anywhere on Earth, if you saw an animal bigger than like a raccoon, it was probably a dinosaur. That's how incredibly dominant they you know as dominant if not more dominant than modern mammals but is it fair to say that they were mostly dumb i don't think so because i think i think that comes down to a that bit of kind of classic almost victorian speciesisms and you get these insane hypotheses like dinosaurs as a species or as a lineage became senile so they forgot to breed that was literally a suggested idea uh, you know, the mammals ate their eggs and all of this kind of stuff. You know, dinosaurs only lived alongside mammals for 100 million years. Be weird if they all went extinct at the same time because suddenly egg eating evolved. Um, you know, you, you've got problems like this. Um, but also, again, that that general speciesism, which, you know, even goes back to stuff like Linnaeus and his taxonomic ranks and even arguably stuff like Aristotle. You've got like, you know, humans are superior in some way. And we're superior to the other mammals. And of course, mammals are closest to us, so they must be quite good. And then they've got to be better than lizards. And then lizards have to be better than frogs. And frogs have to be better than fish. So th that, that gets you into the, well, reptiles must be stupid. And, and they're not. <laughs> I, w I wonder if a human intelligence level organism could have evolved from the dinosaurs. I mean, it's that's been hypothesized plenty of times. Dale Russell, a Canadian paleontologist, the famous guy who came up with this human-like truodontid that was done for a um, TV documentary. I think the one that Christopher Reeve narrated, that I think is a remake, but I've seen the original that Dale had made for his TV show, and it's still... Uh, it's sitting in the collections of the National Museum of Nature in, in Ottawa for Canada. 
It's really, really cool. It's like this five foot tall dinosauroid. That was it there on the screen. Model of the hypothetical dinosauroid and displayed at the Dinosaur Museum in Dorchester. Oh, Dorchester, that's in England. Yeah, I knew there was a couple of copies of it. Trudon always comes back as like the most intelligent dinosaur because it has really quite a big brain for its size. It does have a high encephalization quotient. So it's always been like tagged as like a very good candidate for being the smartest dinosaur. And basically he just hybridized that with a human. But of course, why would these things end up as like plantigrade quadrupeds? And why would they go back to five fingers? And actually, I think he's only got three to be fair, but he's got very human-like feet. Why has it got no tail? Why would those things suddenly disappear? There's no real reason other than just kind of human exceptionalism. But like, I mean, you could argue some parrots, some crows are phenomenally intelligent and show extremely clever behaviors on a par with apes. So at some level, some dinosaurs were extremely intelligent. I mean, yeah, this is a whole other conversation, but all the tiny details that lead to the explosion that is in the our evolutionary tree that is Homo sapiens. Like, what is it? Opposable thumbs, right? <laughs> is it the invention of fire and the meat eating? Is it? Yeah, is it some and other and sociality and so many predation pressure and then the changing in changing environment. I mean, the shrinking of the forest, pushing apes out of the trees into the environment or into into the open environment. And probably the same kind of story could be told about the dinosaurs or about. About anything, really. Yeah, there's, I mean, you, no you, I mean, if you have 160 million years and a global domination, that, I mean, this is the thing. You talked about, like, lost behaviors, but, like, the lost lineages. I wrote about this in one of my books. And, like, you, you want to find, you want a weird animal, you go to a volcanic island. Like, you go to New Zealand, you go to Hawaii, you go to the Galapagos. And yet, those are the places that basically don't really form fossils. So, you think the dinosaurs we know about are strange, what was the stuff knocking around there? We're never going to know, sadly, but for everything you think weird, you know, you think birds are cool. Think about penguins compared to your average bird. Mm -hmm. They live on an ice shelf for six months of the year and can't fly and massively modified skeletons. And, you know, you're, you, compared to your average bird, penguins are unbelievably weird. So, yeah, take an average dinosaur and take it to, like, penguin level or ostrich level evil or hummingbird level evolution there's going to be weirder stuff out there than we found much weirder if you travel back in time you probably your mind will be probably blown by the weirdness yeah, yeah. because those things are almost always in small isolated places that don't preserve fossils very well and so the odds of us ever coming across them i mean you you see it to a degree so you've got um the stuff that comes out of uh, like what is modern Transil was Transylvania, uh, Hatseg, that that's that was a series of islands in the Mediterranean at the end of the Cretaceous, and some of the weirdest dinosaurs are from that chain of islands, and that's not very isolated compared to again something like Hawaii or New Zealand, but it's fitting the exact pattern. You you get dinosaurs on islands they turn weird. Um, we we see that so again dinosaurs were real animals. Like, again, sounds, sounds really painfully obvious, but they, they weren't monsters. They followed the same rules might be pushing it, but certain like guidelines, like ecology operates in certain ways. If you're bigger, you need more food, but you're more efficient. You just are. That's pretty much just physics and scaling. So big dinosaurs are going to follow the rules of bigger animals and small dinosaurs are going to follow the, follow the rules of smaller animals. They just will quite how they violate it in certain ways by having unusually long necks or unusual physiology or eating an unusual diet or because there was a weird plant that was alive then that isn't now or whatever it may be that there's obviously a huge amount of variation and uncertainty but fundamentally we know what makes animals and ecosystems work and dinosaurs are animals in ecosystems they're not that strange at some level and therefore reconstructing their actual biology is challenging, but far from impossible.